she fell again. It's so bad. Wonder Woman, stay up. There we go. Wonder Woman down, but she's up again. Woohoo! Happy Friday. Hello, everybody. Happy Friday afternoon, and welcome to my Zen Den. My name is Mandy Van Havermitt, and I am an independent demonstrator with Stampin' Up! from Great Eagle, Minnesota. And if you are confused, so am I. Um, I usually do my lives at 8 p.m. Uh, Central Time on Friday nights, but we have a family obligation tonight. So, and rather than just skipping the whole Facebook Live tutorial thing, I thought, you know what? I'll jump on at 2 o'clock before we leave, and I'm going to show you a card. So that is what I'm doing. Um, so I have to share with you the Stampin' Up! Uh, remember, I told you last week they are doing some online exclusives. And I saw the radiating, radiating stitches dies on those exclusives. And I thought, oh, they're nice. They're cute. I like them. I'm not going to buy them. I can't buy everything. Just like you, I can't buy everything. But then on an impulse, I did. And oh my gosh, you guys, they're so cool. Um, so I'm going to show you a card quick with those tonight or this afternoon. And... Um, yeah, so let's get to it. Let's make let's make a card using radiating stitches. Let's flip it around here. There we go. So I don't know if you guys have got a chance to check out the online exclusives, but they really are really pretty. Uh, lots of fun stuff on there. So got some extra stuff out. Let's see here. So these are the radiating stitches dies, and they're really really neat. There's um. One, two, three, four, five, six dies in it, but they make really cool borders. So that is what we're going to use today. I'm also going to pair it with the Good Feelings stamp set. One of my favorites because, you know, big words are my thing. So let's get to it. I'm going to bring out a piece of scratch paper because I might be making a bit of a mess today. I kind of know I am. I've got a piece. Let's see here. Where's my... There's my cheat sheet for you. Here's my what I'm going to be using. I've got a piece of Mango Melody, 8.5 by 5.5, scored down the middle, or it will be shortly, at 4 and a quarter. I better make sure that this is 5.5 wide. Sometimes I do weird things. Yep, it is. Okay, so scored down the middle at 4 and a quarter. I've got two pieces of basic white. Both of them are 4 by 5 and a quarter. I've got a piece of a pretty decent sized piece of basic white also um, for stamping on. And then I've got a piece of four and a half by two and three quarter Mango Melody. And I've got a scrap of Poppy Parade. And this is what we're going to be doing. I'm going to take one, I'm gonna set everything else aside. I'm going to take one of the basic whites and I'm going to pull in my ink. And the colors that I'm using today are Poppy Parade, Mango Melody and Gorgeous Grape. And I think those are such fun, happy colors, but I want to kind of show you how I chose these colors. Let me grab one more ink pad here. Okay, so I wanted, I liked Poppy Parade. That's how I started, right? And I wanted a couple of um, ink pads to, or ink colors to complement it. So I was thinking I wanted Poppy Parade, and in my head, I'm back in fifth grade art class and I'm like three basic primary colors blue red yellow okay cool uh, let's see here yellow and red make kind of an orange color so there was mango melody um, red and blue make kind of purple so that's where the gorgeous grape came in um, these three could have also been I could have done I could have done any number of things but that's how I chose my colors I basically took my three primary colors and added uh, the non-primary colors. That's how I chose what I'm making. Anyhow, now you've been dipped into my mind. Whew, scary place, right? Okay, let's open up these ink colors. All right, and I'm going to bring in my sponge daubers. And sponge daubers, I'll bring one that's clean so I don't mess up my hand. Sponge daubers are really inexpensive, um, but they're really fun tools. They're designed to kind of fit on your finger. Um, they are washable, so when these are done, I will kind of rinse them out, let them dry, 
and reuse them. I tend to keep red ones with red, kind of like my blending brushes. Purple stays with purple, yellow and orange stay with yellow and orange. So let's get to it. I'm going to start at one side and I'm going to work my way down. And I'm just going to ink up my sponge dauber and kind of twist a little bit. And I'm doing very random. Just like so. There is no right way to do this. There is no wrong way to do this. I'm, like I said, just being very random in my placement of the dots. And I like this because you can choose any color that you want. Um, any color combination that you want. I just really wanted bright, fun colors today. Uh, if you wanted to do more of a um, rainbow effect, you totally could do that. That would be lovely. Um, but I just wanted happy colors. And this could totally work for, you know, those little boys sometimes. They're hard to make cards for, for like birthdays and things like that. This would make a really good birthday card background. Let's go with one right there. Okay, so... That is all done. Get those out of the way. So that's my background, okay? I'm going to pull in, nope, I'm not. I'm going to stamp first on my piece of big scrap. I'm gonna let that sit for just a little bit to let that dry a little more. I've got a basic black Memento ink, and I've got the stamp that says, you're on my mind and in my heart. So basically just a nice thinking of you card. Get it inked up nice and nice and full. And I'm going to stamp straight down. And I'm going to hold it there for just a minute to let that ink really soak in nice to that paper. The Memento ink pads are a little different than my regular ink pads because they are more of a fabric. So they they adhere they go on to the stamp just a little bit different. If you ever hear me talking about my ink pads, my Stampin' Up ink pads, I'm going to say tap 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 because they're foam. This is more of a fabric piece, so you can really press down on that um, that Memento ink to, but don't press down really tight or really firmly on these because you're really going to ink up your whole stamp and it makes it harder to get a nice clean crisp image. Okay, so now I've got all my stamping done. I'm going to open up my radiating dies. And if you notice, I put I keep mine on um, some magnetic sheets. It makes it easier. These magnetic sheets also fit into um, stamp cases, but when it's a standalone die, I tend to just leave them in the envelope um, with the, I use the label maker and put the words on there. So I can see what I'm looking for. And they stay nice and I don't have to worry about um, the adhesive and stuff like that that they come on. Okay, so I am going to take this die and I'm going to cut out my sentiment like that. I'm going to take my big, big stitch die and I am going to cut out my polka dots. And then I'm going to take my heart on a piece, a scrap of Poppy Parade, and I'm going to cut out one of those. So let's bring in my plates. I'm going to have to make two passes on my cut and emboss machine. We'll do this one first. And remember, with a square or rectangle die, we like to put that angle in first, that corner. Um, it's better for our dies, better for our plates, better for our machine. So if you can, remember to put your corner through first top plate on and I'm going to run it through that cut and emboss machine. And then wait for the magic. You guys are going to love it. It is so, 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 so pretty. Isn't it neat? Oh, I just love it. All those stitch details. It's so cute. It's just the perfect amount. I just love it. Okay. Now let's mount these on there. So I'm going to do the same thing, put that a little wonky there, sideways, or corner first, 
like that. If you need to use a post-it note to hold it in place, feel free to do so. My Poppy Parade and my heart. That one doesn't matter quite so much because there's no real... Ooh, I got ink on my plate. I'm gonna flip that over. My ink must have been just a little bit wet yet on my polka dots. Did it stay straight? Yep, it did. Okay, I'm gonna run it through quick. So be mindful of that um, as you're running your... So, isn't that pretty? And then look at that heart, so cool, okay. So let's build our card here quick. So I'm going to bring in back in my Mango Melody fold and burnish that. And then I'm going to it gerbled a little bit there. Oh well, that's okay. It's okay. Nobody notice. In hindsight. If your ink is really wet, which I still have damp ink on there, um, you might want to consider using your heat tool to help to dry that. Because boy, that mango melody is wet. Okay, that's okay. It's just going to add a little bit more fun. So now I'm going to mount this right on there, just like that. like that. And I'm going to take some dimensionals. Really? There they are. <laughs> you know I'm going to lose things. It was going way too smoothly. Maybe I'm just tired on Friday nights. This was going really, really well, right? Hadn't lost anything. Hadn't cut anything wrong. I'm just, I just totally jinxed myself. You know it and I know it. And I do have a lot of dimensionals, but that's a very big piece of cardstock that I'm bumping up. So I want to make sure that it doesn't sink down. Is that not fun? And so now I'm going to do, I thought just a little bit of sparkle on here would be good. So I'm going to pull in my Wink of Stella, one of my favorite things, you know. And I'm going to sparkle our little heart. Just the perfect, just the right amount of, of sparkle. All right. I'm going to put a little bit of adhesive on the one side of the heart. And I'm going to put a dimensional on the other corner. I'm going to place my heart just like this. So the dimensional, let's cover up that. Here, let's see, we're going to cover that. Oh my goodness, no one will know. There we go. Oh, is that not the cutest card? So then the extra white piece, let's get rid of this. The extra white piece, of course, is for the inside. Is that not just darling? Oh my word, that's a happy card. So, so cute. And I want to show you too, I changed it just a little bit. I put it also, I made one on purple on the Gorgeous Grape before. Um, so let me know which one you like better, the Gorgeous Grape or the Mango Melody. I don't know which one I like better. I'm not sure. I like them both, but super cute. So um, I'm going to flip the camera back around. Here, I'll let you get a screenshot with your, with the, uh, directions there. Okay, now let's flip it around. All right. I hope that you guys have a great weekend. Um, I will be on Sunday. I will be in Swanville at Ladies Day Out. Um, it's a really fun event. It's got, it's a vendor show and I'm going to actually be having a class during the vendor show. It's kind of a pop in whenever you get a chance to, um, 
it will be the vendor show is from 10 to 2. I will be running the card class throughout it. I'm pretty fly by the seat of my pants. So if you come at 11 and you want to make some cards, great. I will be there and we will make some cards. But I will be there from 10 to 2. There's going to be some other great vendors there. Lots of fun. Get out in the uh, out in the springtime. Maybe we're gonna we're gonna will spring into central Minnesota. It's coming. I promise. Um, otherwise, I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. If you are watching this on YouTube, please give me a thumbs up. I love that. And I will talk to you again next Friday. Thanks. Bye bye.